Hello, welcome to the channel. I'm Rob and today I want to be taking you through how to paint the perfect Emperor's children uh, using rattle can techniques and this is part of our uh, rattle can series uh, that I've created in order for you to guys to be able to um, uh, create a fast but effective looking force on the tabletop. I'm particularly pleased with how this Empress Children Marine came out. So much so I'm now considering how to do uh, an Empress Children Army. Um, but we're going to focus on the purples, we're going to focus on the golds, and we're going to focus on the silvers today as well. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video all about painting Empress Children. So it's up to you if you want to pause the video now and uh, because these are the bits that you will need. Um, of course we're using Colour Forge uh, Imperial Purple for this uh, but we're also going to use their matte white as well. It goes down really really nicely so I would suggest picking those uh, two up if you want to create some uh, Emperor's Children. Um, and don't forget your gloss and your matte varnishes as well. So first things first is uh, when you um, prime your miniature, you want to prime it in white first uh, using the Colour Forge Primer. And then you want to prime it in the purple, the Imperial Purple. It's a really nice bluey purple, this. Um, perfect for the Phoenicians, uh, Phoenicians uh, boys. Um, and then the first step we're going to do is we're going to, uh, after we've uh, done our white and then our purple over the top of it, uh, we're going to edge highlight everything with Gene Steeler Purple by Games Workshop. Now, if you want to make it a little bit brighter, the edge highlight, you can. Uh, you can add in a little bit of ice yellow or a little bit of ivory or a little bit of white, a little bit of gauze blaster green, whatever you want to, just to lighten it up a little bit, um, you can do. I found that when I did the, because Jean Steel Purple is quite thin, so I think I did add a little bit of ice yellow to it just to make it a little bit brighter. And then, uh, you might be asking yourself why we've gone with a white primer over and then done the purple. It's so it goes as bright as it possibly can do as well. So I knew I wanted a big, a bright purple for this, um, uh, just so um, it, it would really sing on the tabletop. Um, but um, I was worried if I just did it straight over the model that it wouldn't have as much punch. You can see we're doing the transfers here. I've done loads of videos on uh, transfers and show you how to do transfers. All I've done is gloss the model after I've uh, edge highlighted it uh, using the Halfers Lacquer, then I've apply, applied Micro Set, and then you can see me putting the transfer on here. I think white over purple and gold over purple looks absolutely fantastic. I think it looks really, really good. I think though the white transfers over the purple have a bit more of a punch, uh, so my preference would be always to go with a white transfer over the purple and then do gold detailing like you saw right at the start of the video. Um, but that's just me, you know, that's just my preference, but I just think that it stands out really, really nicely against that that imperial purple colour that we've got. And you see, what you need to do from there is, you know, just make sure that it's uh, nice and flat. We need to let it do its work as well with the micro, uh, micro set, uh, but it was quite a hot day, so it kind of set really, really quickly. I think it took about 10 minutes, and then I was able to um, smooth it out with... Uh, Smooth out with some micro so I do find with the Mark Six pads that the transfers go over them really, really nicely in a way that they didn't with Mark Three and with Mark Four. I'm not quite sure what it is about the pad. Maybe it's the size or the angle. And then here, I'm just using my old trick again, which is uh, micro sole. Uh, I've dipped a cotton wool bud uh, into the micro sole and then just flattening it out and smoothing it out. And again, we'll just leave that for you know 10, 20 minutes, and it should be nice and smooth. So uh, we want some battle damage with this. So at this point, straight after the transfers, it's still glossed, you know, the transfers are just on. I'm using some decayed metal by scale 75 and I'm adding just some chipping techniques. Now, you can, if you want to, use silver for this. You can use something like a Rhinox hide and the Rhinox hide would just be basically like the equivalent of decayed metal. You know, it's basically the same, just one's a metallic colour. It just gives the same look. Um, but I... I for me personally, I would avoid silver chipping. I think the contrast is too much. I think it's too stark um, against the purple 
armor and i think that um you want something perhaps a little bit more subtle and you could see the chipping right at the start of this video when we looked at the photos in the light box actually it stood out the chipping stood out really nicely but it was still quite subtle and f and faded into the background i just worry that if you were to use a bright silver um it would just be too uh it 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 would just be too stark and I think that um, attention would be drawn to the chipping when we want it drawn to the face in particular, the eyes um, and the gold elements. That's the bit that we want to kind of stand out and make stand out. So I say decayed metal, use that all the time for chipping. Now we're going to use an oil wash here um, and this is going to be uh, a mix of lamp black and uh, burnt umber by Winsor & Newton. Uh, you can see here I've mixed it up and this is a really, really thin wash. You can see how thin it is. Um, I just you could use straight up black if you want to but I just wanted to take the edge off a little bit I didn't want it to be too stark um, but you could if you wanted to use a purple wash here to go into the recesses I guess you know for something by games workshop you could use a known oil or something like that I just really like this black brown mix that I use because I think that it simulates quite well as well dust getting into the recesses of the armor but shades it also really really nicely there are loads of different ways to to do this so with the model I'm currently working on I actually did all the pre-shading and pre-highlighting then I pin washed it and then I did the purple over the top of it um, but for the Rattlecan series, this is all about speed and making look, you know, your 40 Marines look effective. So I think this is the, the way to go. And again, lots of people have asked me, can I use Games Workshop shades uh, to do the equivalent? Yeah, but my question to you is, why wouldn't you try uh, using oil washes? I know that some people might not be used to using them, but I would really suggest just yeah using it because they're so simple. It's a rattle can, matte varnish, gloss varnish, a couple of oils, white spirit. Um, in a container, mix it, you know, mix it, and and you're away. And I think the effect it simulates looks awesome, particularly for for Horus Heresy Marines. So you can see here what it looks like uh, after we done after the oil wash is dried, um, and I'm just cleaning it up with a cotton wool bud, um, uh, soaked in some white spirits, just to get rid of any excess where I've made a mistake. And this is why I like oil washes as well, which is that uh, shades. Are much more unforgiving if you um, make a mistake you know you have to paint over it this way we can just wipe it away with a cotton wool bud and I make mistakes like this you know with oils all the time um, so yeah so this is where we're up to now I matted it down at this point and then these are just the base gold so you can really see how far we've gone we're gonna really focus on the golds now though so I've used decayed metal again and any parts that I want based uh, in gold or any parts I want gold I've used decayed metal then I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of decayed metal and elven gold. Now elven gold is great because it's a nice yellowy gold and purple and yellow are contrasting colours. So that's why it looks so striking and fantastic in the images right at the start. Uh, at the start, That's why the gold looks so you know bling because it directly contrasts against the purple. So I'd really suggest the elven gold for this because it's so yellowy. Um, all I'm doing is doing really rough highlights uh, for... Uh, for this, I I would take more time over characters and things like that, making sure all the highlights are really precise. But because it's you know a, a tabletop miniature, um, you can just do really really rough highlights here. Um, and you know the darkest parts or the parts that you think are going to be the darkest, just leave with decayed metal. You know that's absolutely fine. Uh, just keep it nice and nice and rough. And I think that having those rough highlights as well. Uh, really kind of you know simulates like scratches and and tarnishing in a way that um, uh, that you might expect Horus Heresy Space Marines to to, to have um, so yeah so we're going to use this uh, mix this is elven gold and decayed metal um, and uh, everywhere you want uh, to highlight it just give it that rough highlight I would suggest that you for this one do the bonded studs onto the shoulder pad I think that um, it it looks really good with Empress Children. They would be something that I would expect them to stand out with gold. Uh, you know, bonded studs are there to protect them and, and we're all about sort of Mark V armour during the, the Horus Heresy, or at least like those studs came from, I think, the idea of the Mark V where you put bonded studs on because it protects you from bolter blast. But um, I think the Phoenicians boys would probably uh, paint them. Whereas the Imperial Fists, I always thought, actually they would probably put them on the armor and then just spray yellow over the top of them so um think about the legion that you're doing with death guard i don't think that necessarily that they would paint them either um but it's just all about the um the particular legion that you're you're doing and the, the ethos behind their paint jobs 
So you can see here, uh, what I've also done is gone straight up to Elven Gold as well, and I've started highlighting with straight up Elven Gold now. And you can see this is the Elven Gold being put on. And you can see I'm just using it on the tippity top highlight areas um, just to get that final yellow that impact across. And you can see here, this is what it looks like with the Elven Gold and highlighted with, uh, highlighted with it. Now, um, as, as I said before, it looks so striking because it's quite yellowy and it contrasts against the purple armor. So that would always be my advice to you, which is use a gold um, which is more on the yellow side. There are loads of golds out there. Scale 75 do loads like Perido Alchemy, Dwarven Gold, you know, but you know, where Perido Alchemy is more greeny, that's not really what we want. And Dwarven Gold is more heroic um, in the way that, you know, we might use for uh, Ultramarines. I think this is probably more appropriate when you think about our color palette. Now, it's up to you. From here, I kind of looked at it and was like, yeah, no, I'm pretty pretty happy with that. But I did do some tippity-top uh, highlights uh, or just on the bolter in particular, and I think just maybe on the skull as well with a little bit of citrine alchemy. Now, citrine alchemy is a really powerful, uh, powerful paint. Um, and you really only want to edge highlight the very top areas with, with citrine alchemy. You could even knock it back a little bit and add some... Um, uh, add some elven gold into it as well because the jump between elven gold and citrine alchemy is quite high but it does highlight those metallics that, and kind of just gives it that that final kind of refinement uh, from here we're going to use druchy violet um, and this is just i'm just going to use this as a as a simple wash um for um the the purples but i'm going to be quite precise sorry for the uh for the for the goals but i am going to be quite precise with these i'm not going to put it all over it i'm going to be quite careful just putting it into the recesses just shading it with the purple it just makes it a little bit more interesting but if you don't want to do this step you absolutely don't have to it's already shaded because you started with the dark base um but i just you know put it around the side of the 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 cone shape just to shade it a little bit as well um and just into the recesses of the um the recesses of of that gold you can, if you want to, use something like green, if you want to give it a more aged effect. I think, for me, it was just more natural to do it with, um, more natural to do it with, um, uh, with, with purples. Um, but, as I say, often I don't do this step with lots of golds because I start with a dark, um, I start with a dark base. But this is really for, this is, yeah, this is a speed job, so using shades and things like that are fine. You could use oils, but I, for the, it just isn't even worth getting them out, I don't think. We haven't glossed the model to protect it either, so... Welcome back. So this is what it looks like with our golds, and we're going to be uh, looking at the metallics next. Now, really, really simple. Any areas that you want silver, uh, I've just baked coated with black metal uh, by scale 75, and I'm going to use Black Templar's contrast paint, and I'm going to thin that right down with some water, but you could use the contrast medium if you want to, and we're just going to use that as a glaze. I use this because I don't have any known oil, um, so yeah, it's just, just really, really simple to use. So, you know, just be careful with this and you know it's a really powerful paint so i wouldn't use it straight out of the pot to uh, shade um shade silvers um you definitely need to to thin it down um but yeah just pop it into the recesses of the armor um and i think that what makes the mark six quite special is that it's really easy to paint the um kind of the bits in between the armor so whether uh, the joints are it's really easy to paint those bits in silver or black whatever color you want to whatever color you want to do and if you want to make it black you just do the same maybe just a really dark gray and then um, use this use this wash over it so from here we're going to use my old trusty favorite um, uh, dry brush paint which is by uh, MIG um, and as I've said in all videos previously where I've used this it doesn't leave behind that kind of chalky effect that dry brushing can often 
kind of create. Uh, so if you've used really any acrylic metallic and tried dry brushing it, I find that it is quite chalky. Whereas this is this remains quite quite you know really quite shiny. It's really really nice. So use a small um, small brush. This is a makeup brush. Um, I've used here and just dry brush it. Do apologise about the focus. I said in my some of my first videos, I'm waiting for my camera to um, my camera to turn up, and it still hasn't turned up. I think there's a microchip uh, crisis at the moment, um, so I'm still using the phone. So sometimes the focus isn't is amazing, but you get the general idea. You're just dry brushing around the metallic areas. I actually left the joints. I didn't kind of worry too much about the joint areas and dry brush those bits. I just left them nice and dark and and oily. So this is what it looks like so far. So we're pretty much there and the next thing to do will be the the lenses. Now you can choose what colour to do the lenses. My advice to you would be go for a blue um, or a turquoise colour but you could always go for a red colour if you wanted to. But I mean I'm going to show you a quick way to do the lenses on the Nuncio box. So uh, what we're going to do, the bits that we want to kind of the lens parts paint them in your absolutely brightest silver that you have uh, leave that to dry and then we're going to use uh, this Tamiya clear paint which is Tamiya clear blue and we're just going to paint over it uh, and it will create a really nice lens effect and really quick and easy it's the similar kind of thing to spirit stone that we have with spirit stone uh, when I'm not sure if GW still creates those paints but it's kind of like a similar ethos but it does your like lenses really really quickly and creates like a nice shine and this is what it looks like this is our emperor's children marine and i personally i think this is in terms of the ratican series so far i think this one was one of the easiest to create but i think is the most striking i think part of that is because we've got that lovely contrast between the gold and the purple i think the purple is you know the right purple for emperor's children i think that it looks kind of really you know striking and i think it's got a nice dark feel to it i'd probably you know put this as really kind of very very early heresy or great crusade uh empress children whereas later uh later children i kind of describe maybe more pinky anyway i hope you enjoyed the video uh if you did make sure you comment below if you use it tag me in the photos i'd love to see what you create and please don't forget to share this video please don't forget to like the video and please uh, remember to subscribe as well if you've uh, if you've enjoyed it uh, everyone who subscribes it really helps me and supports me so thanks ever so much and uh, have a good time uh, painting your emperor's children marines take care guys